Hey, everybody, it's time. Go get your snack, get your hydration, and get ready for Phenomenal Woman Rise Up with Terry K. Brown. Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the show. My name is Terry K. Brown, and I am the host of Phenomenal Woman Rise Up. Welcome. <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, but I'm cold. I'm telling you, I, I'm just, I'm cold. I like hot weather and this, it's been freezing. I mean, and one day I think it got up to like 40 something degrees and it felt like summer. That's how cold it is in Cleveland. Okay. <laughs> but we surviving because we do that in Cleveland. I want y'all to subscribe, like, and share, just like it says right down there on the scroll. If you know someone who hasn't seen the show, ask them to join in and then ask them to subscribe, like, and share also. <laughs> Woo! All right, y'all. February is an important month. Every month is important, but February is Black History Month celebration. Do y'all like my outfit? I got this from Our Favorite Things Boutique. It's on Larchmere Boulevard. It's one block, I think it's north, one block north of Shaker Square. And Lisa McGunthry is the owner. And it's really a nice outfit. I got the headband came with it. Like it? Mm -hmm. Got my sleeves going on. I love it. <laughs> So you should go on down there. I'm sure she has some other nice outfits down there too. Okay. So do y'all have your hydration? Got my Serena Jakes going. That's my first lady. I love it. Love it. Love it. Got my hydration. Got my black history outfit. Got my viewers. And I am ready to go. We have a great show today. We're going to unfortunately have to talk about that Tyree Nichols incident. Y'all know I have to say something about it because it just, it unnerved me. And I got a few things I want to say about that. But we also have uh, Reverend Chloe Mack. She's going to be on the second half of the show. And she's going to give us some talking points and some action points on forgiveness and the power that you have when you learn how to start the process of forgiveness and keep it going because forgiveness is a flow. We have to flow in forgiveness. So stay tuned for that too. But first of all, I told y'all I had a bad feeling about Memphis. Do y'all remember the first show of January when I was talking about when my husband and I were traveling back from Dallas and we stayed overnight in Memphis and we had a bad feeling the whole time. The whole time we were in Memphis, I was just like, I mean, we had a good time at the, at the B, B King um, Jazz, not Jazz, Blues Club. And we ate good. Y'all know I'm a foodie. But as we were walking back to the hotel and all night long, I just had a bad feeling. My husband had a bad feeling. We got up out of there in the morning. Now we hear about this happening in Memphis about these policemen, black policemen beating a black man. And what's even worse about it is that apparently it is really about some type of relationship gone bad thing where they wanted to prove a point to this young man. Now, uh, oh God, you know, I didn't watch the video. Now, some people watched the video. A couple people told me they had tears coming from their eyes as they watched the senseless killing. And I didn't watch the video because this, it just, when I heard about it, it broke my heart because just a couple weeks ago on this show, I was talking to Julia Rogers. Mother Rogers was marching with Dr. King back in the 60s. And I showed y'all pictures of the police beating black people for no reason, even though there's not a good reason to beat somebody, but the police hosed black people. They took dogs and sick 
dogs on black people and they beat black people to death and hung us. And now I'm hearing about five black officers, I believe, beating this black man, just like the pictures I just showed y'all. You know, um, Julia, Mother Rogers, she was one of the people that told me she had tears in her eyes when she watched the video. I didn't watch it and I'm not going to watch it because it just sickens me. Come on now. Come on now is all I can say. <sighs> Y'all need to learn your history so that you can have some respect for the jobs that you hold. Anybody who holds a job as a police officer, and I'm going to put it on there if you're black, and then you feel like it's okay to use your power, your badge, and your weapon to beat somebody black or beat anybody, okay? But to beat somebody black down like an animal in the street, when you know that's exactly what was permitted by white police to do to us, not that long ago, because it's still happening, even though some people are getting prosecuted for it now. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with your psyche that you didn't think somewhere in that process, this is gone too far? This has gone too far. And I didn't hear the whole eulogy, but I was listening to Joe Madison and y'all need to get that little $15 a month Sirius XM because Joe Madison puts out some good information when for people who don't have a clue about their history and about legislation and about what's going on up in DC, changing the way things work. Y'all need to check that out. But I heard Reverend Al Sharpton talking about how many people died and went to jail and marched for those black men to get the opportunity to wear that police uniform. And then they thought it was okay to beat this young man like that. It's like, you never, you didn't think about that. You didn't let, as I always say, you didn't think this through. That was horrible. And I know everybody's saying, oh God, that was horrible. But like Joe Madison says, what you going to do about it? Because right now there's probably legislation going on up in DC and I haven't done my homework on it. So I'm not going to speak on it. That is saying that this is going to be okay in the future because it's done quite often. And now that we are starting to put police officers in jail for doing this, somebody's going to be up there on Capitol Hill putting some type of legislation through that's going to make it okay to keep doing because the world is ain't right, y'all. So we need to be on top of that. Call your congressperson. Call your U.S. House representative person and ask them, what y'all doing about this? What kind of legislation is going through to prevent the police from taking authority and being able to kill us? Y'all need to think about that. Y'all need to think about it. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. In fact, I believe during this month, I'm going to get the, a list of Ohio's numbers and emails of our people that are representing us. And I'm going to scroll it at the end so that all you have to do is watch this show and write the number down. It takes a whole minute to dial a phone and make a phone call and say, I live in Cleveland, Ohio. You are representing me in the Congress and I'm not happy about such and such. And I want to know what you're doing about it. I want to know what kind of legislation is being put on the table about it. I want to know what's going on right now that might affect me and my family. 
Now, y'all know I'm, I'll be honored about this voting thing. And it's not just at voting time. It is all time. It is all time that we need to be concerned about legislation that is affecting us. All right. I'm going to read this, what I found on Wikipedia and what I found on the Internet about Mr. Nichols, because I think that he deserves People need to know who this man is. It says, who was Tyree Nichols? Tyree Nichols, a father of a four-year-old son, was known to his family as an avid skateboarder and a nature photographer from Sacramento, California, according to the Associated Press. He arrived in Memphis just before the pandemic and later started a job with Federal Express, a major employee, a major employer down in Memphis, Tennessee. If y'all live in Memphis, y'all know that Federal Express is a major employer down there. Tyree Nichols had been with the company for about nine months before his death. The New York Times reports that. He was one of those people who made everyone around him happy, says the step-grandmother of Tyree Nichols. Her name is Lucille Washington. So y'all, I'm making it personal. He's not just another statistic. I want y'all to know who this young man was. The police body cam shows a violent arrest. And like I said, I did not watch this because I I don't think I could stand seeing it. Police said on January 8th that Nichols was taken into custody after a traffic stop that involved two confrontations with officers. During the initial confrontation, Nichols fled the scene on the traffic stop, the police said. Following the arrest, Nichols then complained about shortness of breath, according to the authorities. And we've heard that before, haven't we? He complained of shortness of breath and was taken to the hospital in critical condition where he died on January the 10th. His family has said the police beat him so severely that he was unrecognizable. And we've heard that before, haven't we? The Shelby County District Attorney's Office said in a statement earlier this week that it has understood the reasonable request from the public to view the videos of Nichols' death. So they released it. They released police body camera and surveillance footage showing five black officers from the Memphis, Tennessee Police Department beating Nichols, a 25, 29, excuse me, year old black man. Nichols died three days later in the hospital. And that was from Wikipedia. And there's been protests. Well, we know how to protest. What else can we do? What else can we do? We can call our Congress representatives, our U.S. representatives, our councilmen. You know what else we can do? We can call the police department or better yet show up at our local police departments and ask for the names of all the police officers that work in our city so that we know who they are. That so we know who they are. And so that they know who we are. So that you know I'm a human being. I can tell you, now we had a police officer come to our house last week. Our dog ran to the end of our yard and was barking at a lady and her small dog. And she was scared, which I probably would have been too if it wasn't my dog. She didn't get bit. I talked to the lady and I thought everything was cool. You know, we talked and her dog wasn't hurt. And my dogs, I reprimanded my dogs. And and they, they haven't bit anybody, but, you know, they're big dogs. And they are very territorial. I have German Shepherds. So the police showed it up, up our, our house the next day. 
the police officer, now when we walk our dogs, our police officers in where I live, they we see them all the time. I wave when I see the police officers. My husband waves when we walk our dogs. So they know who we are. When I pull up next to a police officer at the light in my city, I look, I look at them. So I know who they are. And they look back at me. So they know who I am. I'm not afraid of the police officers in my area. I'm pretty sure a lot of them know who I am. But the police officer pulled up. He pulled at the end of our driveway. He did not pull all the way up to the door, which probably is how he was trained. He walked up our driveway and he rang the doorbell. I answered the door. He identified himself to me when I answered the door. And he asked me who I was. And I told him who I was. He didn't ask me, pull out your ID, identify yourself. He didn't have his hand on his gun. He wasn't leaning in. He wasn't doing any of that because he was doing his job. He asked me, told me why he was at my house. When I identified myself, he probably already knew that Terry K. Brown was the homeowner along with my husband at this house because he had a reasonable head on his shoulders. And when I identified my name by name and my husband came to the door, he knew, he, I said, this is my husband, Robert. And I did that so that the police officer knew who he was. It's called respect for who each other is. And this officer told us why he was at our door. And I knew he was coming because the woman, she said that she was okay, but I kind of felt like she was going to call the police anyway, because she had made a little threat earlier before I talked to her about this incident. But he explained why he was there and I didn't get upset and he didn't get upset because he was doing his job. And if I... I told him, I said, well, I mean, this did happen because it did happen. And he said, well, how long have you guys been here? I said, well, we've been here about two years. He said, yeah. And we haven't never had a complaint about your dogs being loose. And he just told us what the law was. You know, your dogs have to be in the yard. When they're not in the yard, they have to be leashed. And he said, nothing happened. Nobody got bit. And this is just a warning. He said, but if it happens again, I'm going to have to cite you for it. So he identified himself. He asked who we were. We identified ourselves verbally. He explained why he was here. We explained that we understood why he was there. He told us what was going down and what would go down. And we had a decent interaction. Thank you, Jesus. And then he left. That's called a police officer that knows his job, has respect for me as the homeowner of this house, and that's called me who knows my rights and knows that the police officer has a job to do. Everybody interacted responsibly. So it can happen. It's not like it can't happen, but everybody has to be on the same page of respecting what's going on. And that will come out with an outcome like mine was more than likely all the time if everybody has some respect for the other person and the other person has respect for them. But that would happen to Tyree Nichols and countless other Black men and women. It's just unacceptable. Y'all say, oh, this ain't 1960, but this same stuff is going on. So everybody needs to get educated. The people who are working as a position of authority and the people who are constituents knowing what should go down and what should not go down. And unfortunately for this young man, it didn't seem like he had a chance from the beginning because the people who were there to serve and protect did not have any intention on serving and protecting that young man. And for that, it's a doggone shame. And for that, we need to make sure that this does not happen anymore. 
put laws in place and put the pressure on the people who need to have pressure put on them. That's my spill on that. Okay. So after this commercial, we're going to come back with learning about forgiveness because y'all know we need to learn about forgiveness. All right. We'll see you in a little bit. 